The sun rose over the industrial city of Varadun, its rays of light shining down the Valley River. On a grassy hill of Whitmore Park to the city's west, a young woman skipped in the early morning light, her scruffy dog bounding alongside her. She came to a stop and brushed her brown curls from her face as she looked up the hill to see a lone woman, Samantha, sitting by the path with her easel and oils painting the scene before her. The young woman smiled to herself and hurried down the hill with her dog, playing fetch with a stick, before heading back up the hill a minute later and noticing that Samantha had vanished, yet her painting equipment remained. Her dog ran ahead of her and stopped by a mass on the ground by the easel, nervously nuzzling at it. The young woman got closer, and as she did, her blood ran cold. There on the damp morning grass, her curly blonde hair a mess with red, Samantha lay spread-eagled on the ground. Her life left her body. The Misadventures of Agnetta DeVoe Episode 1 Painter in the Park Written by Royce Pentecost The young woman hurried to the city guard, but word quickly reached the newspaper, the Varadun Gazette. Not long afterwards, a copy of the newspaper was purchased hot off the press by the human Tamel Izzard Robertson, a young politician dressed in a bright red coat and grey suit, who boarded an omnibus into the city centre. He arrived at his destination a few minutes later, the Vestiment Silver Tavern, where he met his friend, the dark-skinned elven detective Agnetta DeVoe, waiting for him on the cobblestone footpath. Morning, morning. Morning. Why do you have one? Delivery boy, about five minutes ago, dropped off a few copies. I'm heading out. You coming with? Well, that depends. Where are you going? Whitmere Park. Do you know the place? I do. Why? What's there? Look on page three, my dear Robertson, and read aloud the article in the bottom right column. A uh, body has been discovered on the hills of Whitmere Park, West Varadune. Guards to Rapotre, an attack to the head. More details to be printed at lunch. Goodness me, it's not very well put together. So what's interested you in this particular murder, Agnetta? There are many deaths in Varadun every week, and most of those deaths are suspicious, so what's given you the detective bug this morning? Look at the article, Termel. I am. There's not a whole lot of it. Exactly. It's small, hastily assembled, out of format with the rest of the pages. The Gazette is 100% perfect. Usually. I reckon this story slipped in moments before the papers went to press, and I bet the investigation's still going on in the park right now. Thought we'd swing by and have a look, see if we can help. The coach arrived at the park within a few minutes, and as the unlikely pair disembarked, they could see the investigation was indeed still going on. A hundred metres in from the iron archway gates was a group of city guards, dressed in their black domed helmets and royal blue wool coats, assembled around the body in the middle of the wide, open, grassy field. And yet it was waved through when she showed her ID to the junior guard, but she was confronted by the DCI. Please, turn back or I'll be forced to make you do so. This is a crime scene. <coughs> My name is Anya Edvo, detective appointed by the City Council of Varadun to oversee the crime scene. This is Termel Robertson of the City Council, overseeing the operation. Do you have any identification to prove that, Mr. Vo? I do. This is a tax return for uh, Mr. Kilton Means. Whoops, so it is. Here you go. Hmm, I've heard of you. You're the dark elf that solved that Polly's murder a few months back. No, actually, you're mistaken. Dark elves have a dark blue complexion, where mine is more of a sepia detective. Agnetta approached the scene of the crime, unprepared for the sight before her. Samantha's body was still laying where it had been found some hours ago, her dress and blouse now soaked from the frost on the grass. Who is she? Do you know? All we know is she is called Samantha. Our witness knew only that much. Agnetta got down on her knees and held her hands over Samantha's body whispering an incantation to herself. She was performing her spirit magic that allowed her to see the essence and trails left by all beings. Samantha's trail didn't tell her much, hours before it had been strong, as she sat by her easel before it was cut off. Lowering her hands, and Yada looked over the rest of the scene, spotting a paint box with initials embossed in gold on the top. S.W. Samantha. Nasty head wound. It from behind. Hmm. Who's that lady down the hill in the pink dress? The witness, Mum. What's she still doing here? I'll go talk to her. Excuse me. I ain't talking to any more coppers. Well, I'm no copper, so you'll be all right. Unless you're not talking to elven investigators either. 
My name's Anya. Annabelle. Annabelle Ferrald. You all right, Annabelle? No, I'm not. Yeah, sorry. That were a foolish question. The copper bastards drag me back down here after I do the right thing and report it. It's like they take me for a killer. Like this is my doing. Is that what happened, Annabelle? That's awful. Annabelle, my name is Termel. I'm with Anietta. I know you're upset, but it's best not to call the guards such thing within earshot, lest they try and stitch you up for something else. Yeah, that's a good point. These coppers are bastards like that. Did you know Samantha? Only by sight and given names. We spoke sometimes when Dog ran to see her. What happened today? When did it happen? Nearly two hours ago. And I'm still stuck here, looking over, lying there dead again and again. It's like I'm being punished. Are you kidding me? I knew it. I'll get to Mel to see you off home in a moment. I just need you to answer my question. I was walking dog and I saw Samantha up here, painting the sun as it rose, and I headed down the hill to throw a stick to dog. And not a minute or two passed before I came back up and I saw her, lying there covered in... And I ran back up to the gate to find the nearest guard. Twenty minutes it took before he brought me back here, and the others showed up another twenty minutes after that, and I've been here ever since. <sighs> Thank you. You've been a big help. Oh, let me. Careful. Grass is slippery. So Mel will take you up to the gate. There's a stagecoach waiting. It'll take you home. Just tell him where you need to go, and we'll try seeing you later today to check up on you. Tamel returned to Anyata, who had climbed the steep slope from the body to the pathway then further up the flatter top of the hill to some dense woodland. Annabelle only lives a few streets north of here. She got off okay. What's on your mind? How far do you reckon it is from here to the gate? Uh, about the length of a cricket pitch, maybe. And how far from here to the body? <sighs> maybe about half, maybe more. 70 or so metres. And there's nothing either way. No hiding places. It's an open field apart from these trees. So you're thinking that an attacker hid in these trees? Yeah, exactly. Annabelle went down the hill for a minute or so, came back up and Samantha was dead. The only place someone could have hidden were in these trees. Plus Annabelle, down there, she wouldn't have had a clear view of up here, the top of the park. That makes sense, unless the attacker was quick on their feet and ran back across the park with the murder weapon. I'll check the spirit trail to confirm. Uh, there's something there. Definitely human. And they passed through these trees this morning. And what about the weapon? Any thoughts on that? A few. Come this way, Tomel. Into the trees. What I was thinking is something big, heavy, like a club or bat. Now, you wouldn't want to be seen walking around with something like that. So I reckon they would have hid it in these trees. They might have ditched it somewhere around here. You go that way, look in ditches, under leaves. How about a hole in a tree? Yeah. And yet, I think I found the murder weapon. A big, bloody ornate club. Yeah. Yeah. Something just like a big bloody ornate club. Oof. Nasty looking thing that is. Looks like something square's been snapped off top. Is there anything else in the trio? Nothing. Just this. We better take this down to the lead detective before we... There was a rustling from beyond the trees before a woman stepped out into their view, dressed in a floor-length green floral dress, her long dark hair pinned up. She stared at the pair and the club, in shock with her big brown eyes. I'm sorry. I startled you. I was just coming down. I read in the newspaper that there had been a... Oh, God! I'm Anietta. This is Termel Detectives. I'm afraid a body has been found, and the park's now a crime scene. May I ask your name, and where you came from? Janice Wesker. My my house, my family, our estate is next to this park. I came from the gate. Is that Sam? Is her name Samantha Wesker? She's my sister. Janice sunk to the ground in despair. The pair helped her to her feet before Anyada hurried down the hill to present the ornate club to the DCI. I found this up there, hidden in a tree. Didn't take long at all. Now, if you'd actually pull your finger out and do your bloody jobs, maybe you'll actually be able to figure out what's going on here. What are you speaking to? And she's gone. Constable, follow her, report back to me where she's going. The elf returned to help Tamela escort Janice through the woods to her family property. A large limestone manor sat in the middle of rolling lawns and flower beds. The mother, Mrs. Wesker, greeted them out the front and helped them lead her daughter into the drawing room. It had high ceilings, green wallpaper, fancy furniture and an ornate three-legged side table by the door, a copy of that morning's newspaper and some wood glue resting upon it. They took their seats on the couches and armchairs around the centre of the room, Mrs. Wesker sitting by her husband, an elderly man with white hair, staring catatonic at the wall. 
Tamel began to pour the tea as Mrs. Wesker muttered. She can't be dead. How can that be? Janice mentioned that Samantha were a painter. Aye, she is. And a good one too. Landscapes she does. Beautiful works. She sold many and she was making a name for herself too. What happened? Tell me exactly. My sisters are upstairs. Should I call them down? They can wait. It seems as though someone attacked Samantha in Whitmere Park which your estate adjoins. A blow to the head was all, using a club of some sort, which was abandoned in the woods a short distance from your gate. How could anybody... I was going to ask, did Samantha have any enemies, or...? (coughs) No, dear, you stay seated. Janice, help me with your father. A young girl entered the room. Mummy! May I go play outside, please? No, no. Go upstairs to your room. You can go out later. Who are these people? They hear about Samantha. Bethany. Oh, good. About the paintings? Can I show her my paintings, Mummy? I wouldn't object, if it's all right with you, Mrs. Wesker. You may, Bethany. This way, up the stairs. I'll just wait until Agnetta returns. Are you a painter too? Not a painter, but I do draw. Oh, drawing is very good. Not as good as painting, but still very good. Is it? Oh yes, it helps with all sorts. It helps your brain grow stronger. Daddy and Samantha are painters and always said that. These paintings are all Samantha's, but mine are over here. These are beautiful. Samantha helps me. Does she? Well, these show great promise. You could be a great painter. Thank you, but I don't think I can wait that long. Gosh, that's a nasty bruise on your forearm there. Let me have a look at it. I can fix it. How can you do that? I can do magic. I can fix all sorts of things. There we go. Good as new. As Anyada turned to leave, she spotted the back of the door. The wood damaged and caved in, like it had been kicked repeatedly. Whose room is this then, Bethany? Samantha gets the corner for painting. Janice the dresser for clothes. Just a moment, Bethany. You stay here. I'll go see what the matter is. While Anyata was upstairs, Tamel and the Weskers were greeted by the DCI and his fellow guards. With them was a tall, dark-haired man in a burgundy suit. And yet, it quickly descended the marble staircase as a confrontation began to brew. Well, well, look who got here before us. How did you get here then? Well, besides walking. Thought you could try stealing this case from under my nose, did you? And one of my constables follow you. Plus, the city coroner arrived, opened the paint case to find Mr. Wesker's identification within. We are familiar with the Wesker family, with them being one of Baradoon's highest regarded families, so we popped around here to deliver the news to them. Now it seems you already have. Oh, well, I don't like you asking the questions round here. How did you get here? Samantha's sister Janice met us in the woods. She brought us back to... Bastard! You did this! You killed Samantha! Janice lunged herself at the dark-haired man, only to be held back by her mother and the guards. Up the stairs, young Bethany was watching. Another girl, a few years older, guided her away. As I was saying, the Whisker family is known to us. So we stopped by in town to pick up Mr. Mand and bring him here. So that's you then? Agar Mand. That's me. I'm Samantha's fiancé. Mrs. Wesker, I could not believe what the detective was telling me. Surely, Samantha isn't... I was only with her last night. Mrs. Wesker angrily pushed past to storm out the front, the others joining her, leaving only Anyata, Tamel and Janice standing in the foyer. Why do you say that, Janice? That man killed Samantha? Yes, that bastard has tried stealing Samantha away from us. Big, posh, Josephinian noble trying to wed her and ship her back to Josephinia all for himself. Couldn't have his way. We put a stop to it. Oh yes, Mother did. So we had to go and kill her. Is Iger Man a violent man? He's a hunter. Hunts and skins bears. Lots of people hunt and don't make him killers. But has he been violent to Samantha? Or any of you? How do you mean? Grabbing people's rears, pushing them, threats, kicking doors. Uh, I, I, I don't... He could have. He was... Which is it, Janice? I need to know for certain. I should have seen it sooner. Tamel helped Janice outside as Anyata felt a tap on her shoulder. She turned to see the other girl, older, with dark hair, and bearing a strong resemblance to Janice. Is it true? Is Samantha really dead? I'm afraid so. Don't know how I'm going to tell Beth this. Um, I didn't catch your name. Noni, miss. Noni Wesker. I heard your name, Anyata. I was eavesdropping when you came in. Stay with Bethany, Noni. She heard Janice's outburst. I think it's important you be with her in times like this. Agreed. It always is. Hmm. Are you seriously trying to suggest that I killed Samantha? Just as Janice said. This is preposterous! What could I possibly hope to achieve from killing her? To get back 
at us. Punish me for trying to keep you two apart? Leave me with four daughters, no matter if you four took daughters. her back to Josephina. Ria, the second eldest, lying heavily in involved with distributing Samantha's paintings. Apparently she's in Rayleigh Hall selling some now. Five daughters, eh? I didn't even know she was dead until the city guards came and knocked at my door half an hour ago. You're not even upset a little. And yes, deny all involvement of it. Of course that's what you do. It's not looking good for you, Lord Band. Are you now suggesting I murdered her? How dare you! Without any evidence or facts, just pure discrimination. Who are you trying to suck up to now, Basil? Elder Wesker, the infirm, isn't the sort to take that kind of bootlicking nowadays. Besides, I live on the other side of town to the river's north. How could I have even made it here and back in time to do such a despicable act? What do you say to that detective? Miss Wesker was believed to have been murdered nearly three hours ago. And it was three quarters of an hour ago we picked you up at your home, Mr. Mand. Surely you can see how easy it is for you to travel across the city and back in that time. And the reason you can see it is because you know it to be true. You think it's me? Well, you'll need proof before you chain me up. Search my apartment. Good luck trying to find a murder weapon because there isn't one. Oh, we found that already. Hidden in a tree hole in the woods to the east of the property. Yep. That or me. And yeah, City Council detective, with my partner Termel, also City Council, he found it in the tree. Something Detective Capital Lip over there couldn't figure out for himself. Let's see you try and plant that on me, detective. This is a lot more involved than I anticipated. Seems that Detective and Mand have a history. And that Mand had been sucking up to the Weskers for a while. Nobles, poshos, caught in their own little dramas. Nothing's ever really straightforward, is it? So what do you think happened? Right now, Mand is the only suspect. But it's likely the murderer is still out there. It could have been some random killing. But why? Exactly. Why? It could be no motive at all. Samantha was hit over the head and the killer came and went within a minute or so. The body was left there, no other signs of interference, mercifully. Agreed. Nothing's stolen that we know of. Far out. Damn. Yeah. That's not really something we can confirm, is it? We can go back in and try talking to Janice and Mrs. Wesker, but DCI wore us faces with them now. And he's about as cooperative as a broken loo brush. Although, when I look at Samantha's body, she was dressed simply. Simple white blouse, long skirt. The only thing of worth was a necklace and some rings on her fingers. They all looked expensive, but they're all left behind. So you've ruled out the possibility that something was taken? Maybe. The spirit trail would have shown something, the attacker taking something from the body. Maybe we should return to the park. I have a feeling I've missed something. The pair went back across the lawn, through the gate, and back into the woods, finding themselves once more at the edge of the trees. The park was still empty besides a few guards at the gates, and Samantha's body had finally been taken away. It's good they finally took her away. Unfortunately, it prevents me from taking another closer look at her. Do you think I could risk getting into the coroner's office, using these papers? If you value not being arrested, I wouldn't. Right then. Spirit trails. Let's see what we have here. I think I can remember exactly what Samantha's spirit was like. When I first looked over the body, I tried to find out what happened to it. But it's mostly gone. Gone? Aye. Gone. It ended suddenly like it was really bashed from her head when it was hit. Lovely. But I'm trying to see. I think we can agree Samantha got to the park through these trees from the manor, right? She does still live there. Shares a bedroom with Janice. And she passed through these woods. And it seems someone else did, too. I just want to try and find out who. Okay, I have Samantha's. Yep, through the woods. She sat for about half an hour, where it grows stronger. The other trail, it's definitely human. Uh, Ugh, drat. What is it? Well, there's a lot of trails now. (laughs) There's you. There's the city cards. There's Janice, where we met her in the woods. It's a mess. Seems this investigation is going to be more difficult than I thought. Hang on! I've got it. Back to the manor terminal. I may have solved this. Back they rushed through the woods to the Wesker estate, where they quickly assembled everyone back into the drawing room, each taking a seat on one of the lounges or armchairs. I believe I may have discovered who is responsible for Samantha's death. How have you now? Janice, please tell me what yours and Samantha's relationship was like. We were sisters... Yes, of course. We all know that. But how did the two of you get along? Well, we were best of friends. We shared a bedroom. We were close. To be expected. You are sisters after all. Best friends too. Mates. You know each other well. 
And sometimes, the worst of fights can come between friends. I'm sorry? You're pretty angry, aren't you, Janice? Angry at Mr. Mand, and I'm guessing angry at your sister too, because he wants to take her away, doesn't he? And she wanted to go. Yes, it was planned. One of many plans Samantha and I had considered in our year together. That we should return to Josephinia and live in my estate. Away from the industry and factories, the bad air, it, it affects me so. For her, it meant new horizons to explore and to paint, and a more vibrant art community that would only... only have helped her. And away from her family, too. Well, yes. But she was nearly 30 years old. She still lived at home. And admittedly, I'm sorry to say, Mrs. Wesker, not at her choice. What is that supposed to mean? She was a grown woman. She was more than entitled to leave here after being forced to stay for so long. Aha. Uh-huh. Well, that confirms a quiet suspicion of mine. Sorry to say, Mrs. Wesker, but you may have been just a little bit controlling of your children. Of course I was. Why shouldn't I be? They're all my children. With these monsters in the world, I had to keep them safe. Okay, maybe. But another thing. Five daughters. The youngest eight and the eldest 29, I guess. That's a big age gap. Samantha must have been 20, 21 when Bethany was born. How old's Noni? 15. And your how old, sorry? 21. Is there a point to any of this? Aye, there is. It's called gathering evidence. Something you completely failed at. Instead, you just barge around the place, throwing accusations left and right. So, do you know who's to blame? Yes, Janice, I do. But I'll get to you in a moment. Mrs. Wesker, not to be rude, but you strike me as a bit of a control freak. And you ain't losing that control, whether it be your husband falling ill or your daughter's moving away. You don't want any of them to leave, or else you'd be stuck here looking after him, isn't that right? Can't be easy, but Janice and Samantha, all of them here to help. It'd be a lot harder to do that if Samantha moves away. I guess Janice feels the same. Can you get to the bloody point and tell us what's going on? Oi, shut it, numbnuts. Janice, is that why you killed your sister? Because you have a lot of anger in you, don't you? Kicking your door in, getting rough with your younger sisters. You must have been furious that Samantha was moving away, leaving you behind, all alone and friendless, for some bloke. You argued about it last night, right? Then this morning, you stormed down to the park in your anger and grabbed the nearest weapon you could, the broken leg off that side table. That was snapped off by some earlier accident, wasn't it? Waiting to be fixed with that wood glue there? It occurs to me that grabbing a weapon suggests that you knew what you were going to do when you went down there, isn't it? Janice. And then, after you killed your sister, you stashed that makeshift club in a trio and headed back home as if nothing had happened. I bet you were shocked to see the murder reported in this morning's paper as so soon after it happened. So you hurried back down to the woods to retrieve it. You were so shocked to find us with your weapon in our hands. Here we just thought you were grieving. And then, trying to put the blame on Mand, the foreigner who was already at odds with your family and the law here, Yes, deny all involvement. Of course, that's what you do. The same words you said to him. Yes, okay, I did it. I killed Samantha. A confession, lovely. But that's not everything. I mean, there was an earlier spirit trail through the woods I nearly mistook for later. And something Noni said to me that made me think these violent temper tantrums were a usual occurrence. Okay, now you're showing off. Janice Wesker, come with me. You're being arrested for admitting to the unlawful killing of Samantha Wesker. Please stand and put your arms behind your back so we may restrain you. The two youngest Weskers stood in the foyer as Janice was led out, Bethany handing a drawing to Anyata. They ran into their mother's arms, and Anyata spun on her heel and quickly left for outside, her face hidden as she blinked rapidly. Here you go. Sunglasses for the, uh, the bright sun. Thanks. Wow. It's not simple, eh, when there are kids involved. Not like Tony on the train. No, it kind of hits hard. Would you rather head back through the woods to avoid all the guards out front? Yeah. Good idea. Stop by and see young Annabelle too, see if she's doing okay. Anyata and Termel crossed the green grass and headed back to the gate, journeying through the woods, park and streets, to find Annabelle's brown brick terrace house, a few blocks from Whitmere. How can that even happen? To her own sister? Yeah. Hey, do you get, like, special payment or something for solving a case? Pardon? You're detectives, aren't you? I always wondered that. That's right. 
We're detectives, aren't we, Termel? I'll see what can be done. All that horribleness aside, we just want to check up on you. See if you're doing all right. I'm feeling better, thank you. Got a strong tea and it's a relief to know that the person responsible was found quickly. I shouldn't be involved no more, right? Not unless you had any more information, like if you saw Janice leaving the park. I suppose if I looked up from Dog, I might have. And this could have been solved more easy. Can I invite you two in? Mum cooked some banana bread and there's a fresh pot on. We'd be happy to. It's only 9.30. I could do with a tea as well. Just step over the dog. Come on. The Misadventures of Anyata DeVoe, written by Royce Pentecost. Starring Liz Corrick as Anyata, Royce Pentecost as Termel, Jamie Van Dyke as the narrator, Holly Gregg as Janice, Noni, and Bethany, Jacqueline Morrison as Annabelle, Diane Smith as Mrs. Wesker, Stuart Fulton as the DCI, Aaron Beck as Mand, and Benjamin Rossiter as the constable. Theme music, the copyright of Matt Harris, produced by City Park Radio, Bent Eared Records, and Rabbit Dog Productions, 2018.